Hey, good morning everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth and we are going to get into another lesson here, lesson 10, unit 1, on solving absolute value equations because I am at jury duty. Yes, I'm at the courthouse today. And so I'm doing you a favor rather than, you know, hey, read pages uh, 1 through 5 in your textbook and figure it out on your own. I'm producing this for you, okay? So it's taking me time. So now it's your turn to listen closely, take notes because it's the same lesson I give in class, and uh, do your best, and the homework is attached. Okay, we're going to solve an absolute value equation mentally. We're going to solve it also algebraically, okay, two different ways. The very first thing you need to do is recall the definition of absolute value first because you've seen it before. You just have to get used to it, and you get used to it in terms of equations. Okay, so definition first, okay, absolute value of a number. And this, this symbol right here that you see, this is the absolute value symbol, okay? So when you see that, you see the absolute value of x or the absolute value of a number, all right? It's equal to, and I'm going to put this in red here, is equal to the distance, all right, from that number, from x, which is our number in question, from x, which is our number that we're taking the absolute value of, all right, to zero. Yes, it's the distance from the number to zero, all right? And so what we want to do is look at a number line first to kind of get a graphical idea of how to handle it, and then uh, we will solve some absolute value equations. It's actually not that hard at all. So the absolute value of what numbers, okay, numbers is exactly four units away from zero. That's how you interpret this equation. The absolute value of what numbers or what numbers are exactly four units away units away from zero. In fact, you know, let me write that down, okay? So right here, all right, what numbers are exactly four, because we're talking about four here, right? Four units away from zero. Now, if you look at a number line, oops, not an exclamation point, uh, it's easy to tell because all you have to do is start at your reference point at zero, right? So let's say you're at zero here and you walk to the right four units. Where do you end up at? Well, if you walk four units to the right, you end up at four, right? Boom, right there. You walk four units to the right and that's four units away from zero. Well, you can also walk to the left, right? Because, you know, that's, that's distance too. You can travel to the left. And if you walk four units to the left, all right, you, you, you uh, well, you end up at negative 4 right here, all right? So x could be equal to either negative 4 or positive 4. And if you want to write it as one fancy symbol, you'd say, hey, plus or minus 4. All right, that means two answers, positive and negative 4. So in other words, the absolute value of 4 is equal to 4 because 4 units... 4 is 4 units away from 0. And the absolute value of negative 4 is also 4. Why? Because this number is 4 units away from 0 as well. Okay? You may have heard in the past that the absolute value of any number is always positive. Right? Well, it's because distance is always positive. Now, if you take a look at the second one here, what numbers are 2 units away from 0? Okay, so all you have to do is start at your reference point at zero. You start here. Okay, this is your reference point right there where you start, and you walk two units to the right. All right, you end up at zero, and walk two units left, and you get to negative two. So here, x could be equal to either negative two or positive two. Or you can write it in one uh, fancy way. You can go plus or minus two if you want to. All right, that, that symbol right there means positive and negative two. It's two answers put in one. Okay? So you take the absolute value of 2, you get 2. The absolute value of negative 2, you get 2. All right? Why? Because these numbers are exactly 2 units away from 0. It, distance right here is always positive. Okay? All right. Now, so what numbers are exactly negative 3 units away from 0? I mean, can you think of any... Does that, does that even make sense? Can you be, is that possible to be negative 3 units away from 0? Negative 3 units away from, uh, that's from, uh, 0. Is that possible? No, it doesn't make any sense. All right, this does not make any sense. And that's right, right here, 
uh, because this already yields, this right here always yields a positive number. Uh, this doesn't make any sense because a positive can't be equal to a negative. You can think of it many different ways. The absolute value is something equals some positive number. Okay? Um, and so you can't be negative three units away from anything. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So there's no solution here. No solution. You can't be negative three units away from a number. Okay? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, even if you try this, even if you put a negative 3 in there, you're going to get positive 3. Why? Because this number here is 3 units away from 0. So this must be positive. Even if you try putting in positive 3, absolute value of positive 3 is still 3. There's no way you can take an absolute value of something and get a negative number. Okay? The absolute value of any number is never equal to a negative. All right? It's always positive. So absolutely of anything is always equal to a positive. Remember that. Okay. Well, you're starting to get the idea of hope. All right. And so what we want to do is solve some equations here dealing with some absolute value. So you got to look inside here. The absolute value of something plus 4 equals 7. All right. So you got to be, you can think of it mentally first. You got this quantity right in here. Whatever it may be. All right. We know it could either be 7. Right? Absolute value of 7, 7. We know that. Absolute value of 7 equals 7. We also know that the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Why? Because both of these numbers here, I'm talking about 7 and negative 7, are exactly 7 units away from 0. So this x plus 4, whatever it is, it could either be 7 or it could be negative 7. And because of that, uh, what is usually taught is that you transform this absolute value equation into two equations. So let's write that down, okay? We're going to do this each time. We're going to transform this equation, okay? Transform it into two equations. All right, first one, this quantity in here, this x plus 4, notice that I dropped the absolute value. I'm talking about the inside quantity here, inside the absolute value. It could be 7, so that's one equation. And this quantity here could be negative 7, too. Why? As I said earlier, the absolute value of negative 7 is equal to positive 7 because this number here is 7 units away from 0 again. So you take whatever is inside the absolute value and you set it equal to this number as a positive, okay, and also the opposite of it because the opposite of or negative 7 is 7 units away from 0, as I keep saying. Okay, and then you want to solve it. Well, this one here, you subtract 4. This is a very simple one, and you get x equals 3. Which makes sense. If you put 3 right here, 3 plus 4 is 7, and the absolute value of 7 is 7. So that answer should make sense. If you subtract 7, you get x equals, well, negative 14. So if you take absolute value of negative 14 plus 4 here, well, what do you get? Well, you get negative 14 of 4 is negative 10. Uh, what did I say negative 14? Uh, oh, I wrote down the wrong number. Sorry. Gotta love it. I'm I'm you gotta write down the right numbers here. X plus four, not plus x plus seven here. Sorry guys. So let me start over here. This doesn't make any sense. Alright, so you gotta subtract four. There we go. It's getting kind of late. As you can tell, I'm getting ready for jury duty and I made a simple mistake because I'm rushing. Don't rush, you guys. Negative seven, negative four is negative eleven. Alright, so let's check it. So put negative eleven in there. Negative eleven plus four. Absolute, take the absolute value of it, and we better get 7. Well, negative 11 plus 4 is negative 7. Absolute value of that, well, that's 7. Why? Because that's 7 units away from 0. So if you want to test your answers, all you do is plug them back in the equation here, uh, substitute them back in, and check. It's that simple. So basically what you should do on all these equations, and, and even in more advanced ones, which we'll get to here in a little bit, is transform it into equations. So remember that. So here, on this one here, this absolute value of x plus 3 equals 12. Well, I can equal negative 3 or positive 3. I'm sorry. Jeez, come on, Ainsworth. You can equal it to negative 12 here. Sorry, 12. It's equal to 12. Absolute value of 12 is 12. Or you can equal negative 12. Why? 
if this quantity here was 12, absolute value of 12 is 12, or absolute value of negative 12 is 12. So that leads to two equations again. So let's write them out. Your x plus 3 could be 12, or this x plus 3 could be equal to negative 12. And this is usually how people handle it. You just set this, whatever this is inside the absolute value, equal to 12 and its opposite. Opposite meaning it's negative. All right, and you solve. So subtract 3, and you get 9. That's your first solution. 9 plus 3 is 12. Absolute value of 12 is 12, so that should make sense. You subtract 3 again, and you get absolute value, excuse me, x is equal to negative 15. And if you substitute negative 15 in here, you get the absolute value of negative 15 plus 3, which is equal to the absolute value of negative 12, which is equal to 12. And it works, right? You should get 12. So you could check your answers right here. All right, no problem there. You can always check your answers. I just checked negative 15, the second answer. Nine's obvious. Nine plus three is 12. Absolute value of 12 is 12. It's, it's almost too easy. The only time it gets a little bit tough is when the inside of the absolute value is, is a little bit more complicated, which we'll see here in a little bit. Okay, at this point, let's pause and play the video. All right, let's get you interacting here. So pause and try it, and then play when you're ready. All right, so I want you to transform this. All right, you know this x minus 2, whatever this is, it could be equal to 11 or negative 11. All right, so transform it into two equations. When you're ready, hit the play button and check your work. Okay, so let's check your work. You got x minus 2 is equal to 11, or x minus 2 is equal to negative 11. Here we're going to add the opposite, and we get 13, which should be obvious. 13 minus 2 is 11. Absolute value of 11 is 11. Here we're going to add 2 again, but this time we're going to get equal to negative 9. All right. If you put negative 9 in here, you get negative 9 minus 2. Well, that's negative 11, so the absolute value of negative 11 is 11. So this one checks out as well. I'm talking about this solution right here, the second one. First one's always obvious. The second one's not. Okay. Now we got to be careful here. On this one here, this 5 minus x, whatever it is, all right, it could be equal to either 8, 8, or negative 8. All right, so pause the video again and transform it. Pause the video and then play when you're ready. Okay, so here we go. 5 minus something is equal to 8. All right, 5 minus something equals negative 8. So let's subtract 5. Why? Because 5 is positive. And you get negative x equals 3. And divide by negative 1. And you get x equals negative 3. Over here, you subtract 5. But then you get a different answer. All right, you get negative x equals negative 13. Divide by negative and change the signs. That's all it does. And you get 13. And that should make sense. 5 minus 13 is negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8, all right, which gets your answer back. So always check your results. So you can take your result, substitute it in right here into wherever x is, and you check it out. And if you get the result, well, you know you're right. And that's the basics, all right? Now you try one, okay? What I want you to do is pause the video again. Pause and play so you can participate here instead of just taking notes. All right, so let's transform it. So here, this quantity here, the 6 minus x, it could be either to uh, equal to 12 or negative 12. So let's transform it. So 6 minus x equals 12 or 6 minus x equals negative 12. Then you start solving. Subtract 6. And you get negative x equals 6, divide by negative 1. And you get x equals negative 6. And that should make sense because 6 minus a negative 6, well, that's 12. Absolute value of 12 is 12, and which it better be equal to, right? So over here, you're going to subtract 6. And you get negative x equals negative 18. Divide by negative, 
All it, all it does is just change the signs. So just in the future, just change the signs. And you get 18. And that should make sense because if you take this and you take 6 minus 18, that gives you absolute value of negative 12, which is equal to 12. So you could take your answers, okay, just substitute them in like it did, and, and you better it better check out. You better get 12. If not, you made a mistake. You can check everything you do in algebra, okay? You just substitute your answer back in the equation. That's all you do. Okay, last one. Pause again. Pause and play. Okay, so this, uh, this quantity in here, this x minus 2, uh, it could be either equal to negative 11 or 11. So let's transform it. So x minus 2 could be equal to 11, or x minus 2 could be equal to negative 11. So add 2, you get 13. 11 and 2 is 13, which should make sense. 13 minus 2 is 11. Absolute value of 11 is 11, which gives you your answer back. Here, if you add 2, you get a different answer. You get negative 11 plus 2 would be negative 9. And so if you put in negative 9, you get negative 9 minus 2, which is absolute value of negative 11, which is still 11. Okay, so remember, you take your results and you check them and you better get whatever the right-hand side number is, okay? All right, now, this one, uh, a little bit more challenging. Okay, we still transform it the same way. This quantity in here is now a little bit more complicated. It's 2x minus 5, but you do the same thing. Whatever it is, it could be equal to 9 or negative 9. So you transform it. So 2x minus 5 could be equal to 9, or 2x minus 5 could be equal to negative 9. Now let's add the opposite first. It's always easier. And you get 2x is equal to 14. 2 times 7 is 14, so you get x equals 7. If you add 5 over here, you get a different answer, because here you get 2x equals negative 4. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. And then if you divide by 2, you get x equals negative 2. Now, having seen that, what I want you to do is pause the video, all right, and when you're ready, all right, press play. I want you to try this one because this time, this 3x plus 4, whatever it may be, it's either 13 or negative 13, and so you transform it into two equations each time. Go for it. All right, let's check your work. You got 3x here, plus 4 is equal to 13 or 3x plus 4 is equal to negative 13. So let's subtract 4 first. You get 3x is equal to 9, so x is equal to 3. 3 times 3 is usually 9. This one gives you a different answer because here you have 3x equals negative 17. Hmm. Okay, and then when you divide by 3, you get x is equal to negative 5. Let's see, 17 divided by 3 divides in 5 times remainder 2. All right, so negative 5 and 2 thirds. Yes, you can have fractions, okay? So don't worry about that. That happens all the time. In fact, it usually looks more ugly than uh, pretty, like the first solution here. Okay, so now you guys get to try it here. This is your homework attached. All right, section 10, solving absolute value equations homework. All right, well, how many do you have? You only have, oh, you only have eight of them. Ugh, too easy tonight, okay? So I want you to try one through eight all. All right, this is solving absolute value equations. Remember, I want to see, show the two equations. Show the two equations each time. All right, I want to see you transform it. So remember, like on this one here, this 8 plus n, whatever it is, it could be equal to, well, it could be equal to 3, or it can be negative 3. So I want to see you transform it. So 8 plus n is equal to 3, and then 8 plus n equals negative 3. I want to see this on each one of these problems. I will not sign the homework unless I see you transform it. All right, so go ahead and do that and give your best. And as always, well, check your answers on the back. All right, be smart about it. Okay, and this is Mr. Ainsworth. I'll see you in my next lesson, assuming I get out of jury duty. All right, I'll see you guys soon, hopefully. Take care. Bye-bye.